Hi everyone, welcome back to Money with Kazim. I'm your host, Kazim, and your today, um, in this new episode or in this new series that I'll be doing more often, um, I wanted to kind of do a podcast where I dive deep into the intersections of money and personal finances and um, different merging mergings of societies um, that we often don't think about. In today particularly, I'll be looking into disabilities and the intersections of money and disability. Here in Canada particularly, um, it's a conversation we need to have, and I'm really excited to explore the challenges, resources, and strategies that can help Canadians with disabilities navigate their financial um, landscape. Let's keep the, uh, let's begin this by discussing the unique financial challenges that people with disabilities face in Canada. It's not just about uh, making ends meet there are often additional costs involved. For example, healthcare. Healthcare can be a major financial burden for people with disabilities. Did you know that while Canadians have public, while as Canadians, we have public healthcare? There are still many out-of-pocket cost expenses, especially for those with disabilities. You might have costs for medications, therapy, assistive devices like wheelchairs or hearing aid or walking cane even <clears throat> even with provincial health coverage not everything is included this can really uh, strain your budget right if you're a person with disability you can uh, become a significant burden Have you ever experienced a surprise medical bill that you're frustrating, uh, that frust, um, that is very frustrating for you, right? Understanding what is covered and what isn't covered can be very, um, can be very challenging. Now, let's talk about government assistance program here in Canada. We have a few options like the Canada Provincial. Um, the Canada Pension Plan, right? That is more geared. Um, uh, oh, sorry. I meant the Canada Pension Plan Disability, CPPD. This pro program um, is geared towards um, Canadians at the national level, those who have worked. In order to be able to qualify for this, you need to have... Um, at some point in your career being employed right and we have programs uh, at a provincial level like the ontario disability support program or abata's assured income for severely handicapped uh, age navigating the application process for this benefit can feel very overwhelming many people get denied the first time they apply which can really dis be discouraging, right? I know vast array of people um, as I work in the healthcare or mental health sector particularly, I know va vast array of people um, with mental health have, um, having to find, the, uh, facing significant difficulties navigating the the, the the often distressing challenges that comes with um, applying for some of these um, governmental resources that's meant to help people with disabilities um, navigate hardship. Um, unfortunately, in order to be able to qualify for those services, it can often be um, stress-inducing for a lot of people. But here's the good news. There are organizations that can help people um, through the process. Groups like the Canada, Canadian Council on Rehabilitation um, and Work, CCRW, can provide support. 
um so there are also agencies all across alberta particularly because i'm in alberta so i'm going to speak specifically to alberta there are agencies across alberta that provide significant support in terms of helping people navigate um the application process or um the distributions of the resources process right so in that sense there's a bit of um there's a bit of um you are not doing it alone kind of sentimentality that you you can have access to resources however where the challenge lies is in accessing many of those services right many have significant wait time which can often pose significant barriers to those trying to access those services many have stringent um qualifications in order to be able to use their services right i know for my uh, organization particularly uh, you need to have um, a level of mental health or be diagnosed with one form of mental health or another to be able to access our services um, that's a significant barrier that um you know can be um very challenging for people right what happens if you're a person who have a visual impairment and there is no uh, agency providing that support as an individual with um, visual impairment right so navigating some of those complexities for people with disabilities can be very challenging now let's mo move on to financial literacy which is one of the main issue um that i find that a lot of people with disabilities often uh, face significant challenge with financial literacy and budgeting are very very um difficult right for people with disabilities it's a skills that often many people don't have right um when we think about particularly the importance of the disabilities uh, with regular expenses traditional budgeting might be might be enough right creating a flexible budget is key for people with disabilities it can be very challenging to navigate a very very um often rigorous um accusation ac accusation acquisition of, of skills um to be able to um um address significant challenges as it relates to learning um how to manage their finances how to budget how to prioritize um where their money is going right all of those things significant skills these are not skills that are taught at the educational level right that's actually one of my major gripes um in in our society today is that you know we we pride ourselves on being a society that um is very egalitarians and want people to be successful and the idea of free will and independence however when people do not have the skills to be able to make those choices it becomes um it becomes more challenging right for people to for us to then say people are freely willing to choose to be in poverty or to um uh uh, to not have resources to be able to manage their needs right there here is where like resources like some of the things that i'm providing on this channel becomes very important right flexible budget is very key right uh, for those people who are facing challenges who with managing their finances it's very important for them to have a fixed expense 
rent utilities and then consider those variable costs like medications and therapy sessions however where the challenge also lies is that a lot of these people as i discussed earlier are very heavily dependent on um, financial assistance by, by government right when you have variable expenses it can be very challenging especially during an inflationary exp uh, um, time as we are currently going through right when you have a uh, fixed expenses that's not changing but yet your your monthly expenses is rapidly changing or evolving right we have that far too many people with disability being displaced from their houses because their rent went up we have far too people who, many people with disabilities who cannot pay their uh, grocery bill or utilities bill because they simply do not have additional funds to be able to pay for it right so when we begin to look at the the pernicious power of poverty and the way in which finances kind of intersect with disability uh, and the the lack of effort to ensure that people with disabilities are well educated on these issues it becomes very obvious that we need to have more broader conversations about resources and allocations of of resources to those things right additionally one thing that i want people with disabilities who who may be um um who may be watching or listening to this podcast to know is um to not forget about saving right savings is very Im important for emergency purposes even a small amount can go a very long way in providing a peace of mind in canada we have a specific program like the registered disability savings plan um, if you've been on my channel before, you'll know that I constantly talk about the RDSP program. Uh, it's a program that I myself have used and I'm currently still using and um, saving significantly true for my retirement purposes, right? So it's very important to harness the power of savings and, and investing to to help create that financial lib liberations for people with disabilities. Entrepreneurship and self-employment. Now, let's talk about entrepreneurship. For, for many, uh, starting a business offers the flexibility that traditional jobs may not, right? When you think about, you know, you know, a small little um, person who, who who has a disability also trying to um, start a small business, whether it's, you know, making a made um, candle or soap or whatever. You know, those financial liberations can be very empowering for people who traditionally have, haven't had the financial means to be able to um, transition from the traditional job environment to um, to them actually building something that could potentially be bigger than themselves. Uh, I think that is where the power of entrepreneurship can be um, leveraged and creating financial independence for people with disabilities. Um, However, it comes with its own set of challenges. If you're thinking about self-employment, managing your finances can be very um, dif different story, right? Now, here are some resources if you're thinking about this as a person with disability. 
you want to look at grants and funding opportunities specifically for disabled entrepreneurs in Canada. Programs like the Canada Business Networks and various provincial init initiatives can can also help um, uh, people with disabilities uh, kind of get started if that's something that they're considering. I know there are different banks that would um, have different programs also. Um, if you can, if you can provide them with a, um, if you can provide them with a, a business plan that shows how your business is going to work, I think it's very much something that you can explore and and look into and see whether or not you know that's something that would work for you, right? Community and support networks is another important one that we should probably look into. The power of community support, connecting with others who share similar experiences can be invaluable, right? Um, you know, even though we might not all be going through the same, you know, form of disability or whatever, um, I think it's very important that we create a, a platform where people with disabilities um, of all forms can come together and share ideas and and rub minds about how to um, how to navigate the the how to navigate the complexities um, of of their financial situation, right? Um, you know, I think it's very powerful when you are amongst people who also. Um, experience the same level of maybe not the same right maybe not the exact same form of disability that uh, uh discriminations or, or ableism in society but we as a people we all kind of have one thing or the other um that we're disadvantaged over in an ableist society so being able to share those experiences, I think, can be very powerful. I think it's very important to think about whether or not it's something that you've done before, right? As a person with disability, is this something that you might be interested in doing? Is this something that you've done before? I'm interested to hear your experience down in the comment section below. Excuse me, my voice gets dry very quickly. Focus on what you can control by educating yourself. I think education is very liberating. Even though far too many people with disabilities uh, uh significantly qualify for positions that they are currently working in right but because of discriminations and barriers to employment in their fields they are having to contend with uh a lower positions in, in the in the in the field that they are currently working in right it makes it so much challenging one that i find many employers use over and over and over again is the ability to drive even when the job does not require any form of driving many employers still continue to maintain that they require ability to drive in order for people to to apply for a position that clearly um you know when you read all the description there's really nothing in the description of the job that necessitates driving now before we wrap up this 
first episode. Um, let's just do a bit of a recap in terms of resources that you know people with disabilities can have access to, or or things that they should consider doing. It's important to educate yourself, familiarize yourself with resources and rights available to you in your province. Create a flexible budget that include both fixed and variable expenses. Advocate for yourself. I think we often don't talk enough about, enough about advocacy. Um, advocacy, I think, is very essential to creating a bit of liberation in any social justice effort. Um, as somebody that studied disability studies for, for several years, right? One thing I know about any, any resistance effort to bring about liberations for people with disabilities, it's, it's often rooted in advocacy and activism, right? So I think that is very much, uh, an individual effort. Um, you know, it, it's a lot more complex than that. I realized that, you know, um, because of the society that we live in, far too many people, um, have experienced a level of self helplessness, right? Uh, which can often legitimize the experience of, um, lack of access to resources in society, right? Connecting with community, again, find local or online group resor resources um, that resonate with you. <clears throat> and, and lastly, I think it's important for people with disabilities to begin to think about entrepreneurship as a way of building wealth for themselves and for the future generations. Um, I think it's not, it's no longer enough for us as people with disabilities to rely on system that doesn't give a shit about <laughs> who we are or, or, or what we're trying to accomplish in a society like this, or, or trying to bring about um, some level of justice for ourselves or to create some semblance of, of equity in, in our lives. I think the way we're going to get there is by creating va vast array of um, employment opportunities for ourselves and for those that we work with, right? You know, when more and more people become employed, more and more people with disabilities becomes employer, I think things will shift. I think the kind of conversations that we have would be so different to what to what we currently have, right? When it comes to disability issues and disability rights, I think we are not having the right conversation. And um, entrepreneurship is very much at the heart of it. Those who have power change systems. Let me leave you with this. Thanks for sp spending some time with me today. I hope you found uh, this conversation insightful and empowering. Remember that navigating the intersections of money and disability can be very challenging, but the right resources and support, it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely something that we as a society can, can navigate uh, and, um, make change within if you enjoyed this episode please share it with someone who might benefit from it don't forget to subscribe and join me next time as we continue to explore the world of money together take care and remember you've got this